Hi, I'm Paul Miller with The Verge. I'm here with Mark Cipetta, the Vice President of Advanced Development at iRobot, and you built Ava, is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> with your own bare hands, right? Uh, not exactly, but... Uh, but this is a hand-built prototype of, of a mobile robotics platform. <laughs> Absolutely. Can you, wh what is Ava? So Ava is the f world's first practical robot app development platform. Uh, she takes the best innovations from the mobile computing space, mm. from the electronic gaming space, and of course the mobile robots industry, and brings them together to bring robot app development to the iOS and Android developer okay. uh, communities. And uh, so there's a lot of technology on here, but what you guys want to emphasize is the apps that can be enabled by this? Yeah, so uh, application development is definitely one of the key uh, uh, missions of this robot, mm. you know, exploring new market opportunities for us internally um, and developing partnerships uh, to solve some practical, you know, robotics problems. Mm. But uh, we're also using this platform to continue to move the state of the art in robot navigation through real world environments. Right. Now, so you guys are working, you guys have a partnership with Google, right, for app development? That's correct. What, how is that going? What's, what's happening there? Um, there's a couple robots uh, out there that are um, uh, having applications, you know, developed. So Google has them. a couple Avas. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And what what are they working on there? Uh, you know, I really am not sure. <laughs> A Android. I think, I think yes, Android, and I, I think they're ex sort of exploring the space at the moment. Okay. And is that is that the are you working with other developers that are just trying to figure out where they can fit in? So you know, right now we uh, just uh, struck a partnership with InTouch Health mm. to bring a derivative of this platform uh, into the healthcare space okay. to allow doctors to do remote patient monitoring and rounding. Is that research or is that a product that you guys are working on to deliver? No, that's uh, geared towards product development. Okay. Uh, so let's just talk about Ava. You mentioned it's got a, like, this is basically a connect sensor. What is it's the pure? That's what? correct. It's a prime sensor. Prime sensor. There are okay. actually two of them. Uh, and the prime sensors are uh, depth imaging cameras. Right. Uh, as well as RGB where is cams. The, where is the other one? The second one is, uh, is under the shoulder and it, it pans back and forth and it looks at the volume in front of the oh. robot. Uh, so it's like an IR sensor, but it's just panning. So it's another connect or connect type of sensor. Oh, there it is. It's like way under That okay, uh, it. pans in front to uh, develop situational awareness and to avoid right. uh, obstacles that are in front of it. Now, when you guys were uh, developing this like about two years ago when um, you started? Yeah, we started uh, around March of 2010. Was this even available to you at that point? The platform itself? No, the, these sensors. Um, yes, it was, but uh, in prototype form because the Connect hadn't been out yet. Right, and, right. Um, so you guys had that pretty early, and it seems like, is that, I mean, we for the hacker community, that's been such an enabling technology, but it's so cool. I mean, even iRobot is using this sort of technology. Yeah, you know, iRobot uh, is, uh, we have a number of core competencies, mm -hmm. one being mobile robot navigation, another one being building, you know, practical products. Right. Uh, we also develop our own sensors in-house, but we that's a shared competency. I mean, we are always looking outside to um, see what the latest in you know, high fidelity sensing right. uh, is around. So for example, this has a, uh, a long range scanning laser range finder. Right. And it's based that it's used for uh, localization and mapping as and well. And it's got some sonar in there. Yes, it has upward looking ultrasonic sensors to pre uh, prevent the robot from uh, you know, decapitating itself on a table. <laughs> well, we got the, that's, that's a smart, that's a good one. And we got to play around with it outside. I mean, it's, you know, with the it, break collision avoidance. And now you guys have an app here. You can just, you know, point to where you want it to go and uh, it goes there? Uh, that's correct. Uh, there's a, a number of ways to, um, to get your input into uh, the system. One is there's a map. You can click on the map and the robot will autonomously plan a path okay. to whatever that uh, point is. You can string points together to make like patrol paths. You can also click in a video image and it'll go to where you click in the image. Um, you can control the individual degrees of freedom right. by touching on the image. If I wanted to make it say no way, or you know, or um, she also responds to you know direct right. uh, touch as well. So like I can like 
and will look at me. What was it? Yep. If you uh, if you do that, she'll turn. If and you then tap her, goes the direction. She'll turn towards you. Oh, that's the one. <laughs> I was doing this so well before. I promise. And obviously, you could if you bump into it with those pads down there, she'll stop, blush. Um, that's correct. And but this is this isn't how users are going to control this. You want app developers to have access to this right. and use that to navigate? Yeah, absolutely. We've created an API and mm -hmm. we've exposed it to the face device, which in right. this case happens to be an iPad, but can just as easily be an Android tablet. And you know, the sky's the limit, right? Mm -hmm. This is a, uh, a very robust, safe, and uh, you saw it move. It's very swift right. uh, you know, navigation platform that is equally at home in a home environment, in a business environment, or even in a healthcare institution. Right. The operating around people and uh, accomplishing its mission, getting from point A to point B, right. is, uh, you know, it's state of the art. It does its own path finding. Absolutely, it'll plan its own path and uh, using the, uh, it's, it's a knowledge of the, the world and a map that it's created by itself. So it, it does create that, like, uh, now right now you guys kind of have to like scan, like set it up a little bit, but will it be able to just dynamically generate its own map for things? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we're working on uh, autonomous exploration as an example okay. uh, in the research space so that, you know, you could pull a, ro a robot out of a box right. and, you know, fire up an app and say map and it'll drive around your home and, or in your, your, your office space and will create the map on its own. Okay. Um, and you know, this is an engineering development tool right here, so it's not very pretty. Right. Uh, obviously, the maps can be post-processed mm -hmm. to give the user you know, a really nice looking um, user interface. And you guys are doing stuff, uh, this is similar to your uh, military robots, it can, it can follow you, is that correct? That's correct, yeah, this robot um, does uh, person detection and okay. person following. Uh, like also, face recognition? Um, not facial recognition, but uh, um, it uh, looks at the upper torso okay. in, in the case of this robot and identifies that it's a human being uh, and then can um, either follow you or go away from you or okay. you know, whatever it's programmed to do. So what's, what's next for, for Ava? Uh, is this early development? Where would you, where would you say you are right now? I'd say it's uh, market exploration, early partnership development, um, and uh, you know, a continuing technology uh, development for us. Right. Uh, and what's next? You know, greater exposure to the developer communities would be yeah. uh, is of importance to us. Is that a messaging thing for you guys, or is there stuff that you need to do to be ready for a lot more developers to get involved? Um, I think we're putting, we're building the groundwork to engage with uh, greater numbers of developers. Mm. Uh, so there's still a little bit of work to be done there. Okay. Uh, and we have limited numbers of uh, these prototype platforms now. Um, soon there'll be derivatives right in the okay. marketplace uh, under the InTouch uh, agreement. Right. Uh, Wait, can you explain that a little bit? Sure, we but signed we signed an agreement with InTouch Health uh, earlier okay, that in, one, that one. Okay. in the year, yeah, to develop. Our and market. that will be in the market at when? Um, we're not saying exactly when it'll be in the market, okay. um, but it's we're in joint development right now. Okay, great. And uh, are is what comes to the market going to look like this? Um, I think you'll see the family resemblance. Okay, but it won't look exactly like this. Will it have limbs? Ah, uh, so. Uh, I would say that one will not have limbs, but the the health one. The health one will not have limbs. But are, are you guys looking into that, researching that? Um, yeah, we have a lot of uh, manipulation development that's happening in house mm. uh, research, uh, and um, you know, right now the problem of going through cluttered environments safely um, is solved, right. and it's solved in a way that's you know obviously good enough for highly cluttered you know, even small environments. Right. So you can imagine next steps would be, okay, now I can get from point A to point B. If somebody puts a meal tray on me and tells me to bring it into the family room, it'll right. do it. Right. But it can't, you know, manipulate the world yet itself. So that's, and then the goal is for it to be able to do that. <clears throat> um, that that's just one possible application that could be developed. <clears throat> 
um, with the right hardware. With the right hardware. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's. I mean, that seems like the. That's been a for a consumer robot outside of these single purpose ones you've done with like uh, Roomba and the the gutter one. Yeah, Luge. Yeah. Uh, you know, the idea that a robot could go to the fridge, get out a, a beverage of your choice and bring it back to you. I mean, exactly. that's kind of like the, the idea, milk, <laughs> a, a soft drink. Exactly. Uh, that's kind of been the, I don't know, for some reason that stuck in my mind as, as where consumer robotics need to go for someone to spend what this would cost to get it in their home. Um. Single purpose robots right, are uh, like the Roomba, you mm -hmm. know, are obviously have great utility. We have a vision of uh, an automated home where an Ava type robot is the focal point. Yeah. And it's there to interact with humans so that the humans don't have to interact with the other application specific robots. Right. So this robot is here to command the other robots, to, um, to serve you, and it's also here to directly you know, serve you in that vision. So absolutely going in, you know, fetching and carrying things for you, um, you know, allowing you to be somewhere where you're not physically mm. delivering content to you through, you know, web connection and uh, um, or tablet computer. Uh, so those are all potential applications. And are some of the barriers there um, the actual technical complications or are, are some of them the cost implications of bringing something like that to consumers? So, you know, that's a great question. So we're the leader of, you know, the practical robotic space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you won't see iRobot more than likely release a product that doesn't have uh, a very high, you know, benefit to cost ratio, right? Mm -hmm. So the Roomba is, you know, for what it can do, you know, it's priced reasonably low. Right. Um, it's it's really both, right? There's still technology development that needs to happen, and also uh, there needs to be market pull, right? right? There needs to be a practical problem that needs to get solved uh, at a price point that we think we can solve it in right. for us to bring a product derivative of this to market. But you know, people didn't think they needed a Roomba before you had the Roomba, right? Um, you know, that's a classic problem in the field of mobile robotics, right? It's in the early days, uh, you know, over the last like 20 years, folks would call mobile robotics, uh, you know, solutions running around looking for problems. Mm. And uh, the Roomba was really the first um, problem that customers had, that they right. knew they had. They just had a different way of, uh, you know, solving the problem, a more conventional way. Uh, with uprights and canisters, and whenever we talk to people, they would say, "Make me a robot that vacuums your floors." Right. So that was like the first killer app. Uh, you know, getting a beer out of the fridge—that's pretty much a man's, you know, first. Uh, right. That's an hour of app. vacuuming versus a minute of getting off the couch. Exactly. I, uh, I see that. So. <laughs> now, you, uh, back to what you were saying about um, interface. Uh, is there an aspect of this that the robot is is user interface? even more so or in some ways different than just the practical application? Um, so Ava is capable of interfacing with people through speech, through gesture, mm. uh, through touch. Um, and as advancements continue in the mobile computing space, mm. so things like facial recognition, as you mentioned before, uh, or um, you know, uh, basically other applications in that area. Right. We should hopefully leverage those to uh, deliver those advanced capabilities. Do you think of that as natural user interface in the sense that like Microsoft thinks of the Kinect, or is the fact that a robot is a physical present, is that a more natural user interface? Um, I think it's both. You know, um, you know to take Kinect as an example, um, playing tennis with a Kinect is, it's, it's nice, it's interesting, but mm. there are sometimes where you want to actually physically interact with something. Right. You're not holding anything in your hand. Um, you know, steering wheel, you're doing this. Right. Right. So the tactile uh, inputs are very important to us. You know, robots yeah. are going to be in the environments with people. People are going to touch them. 
you know, it's it's a common way. You know, if I come up to you and tap you on the shoulder, you're going to turn around and look at me. It's right. just one of the ways that humans are used to interacting with other organic beings. Um, for robots, it's we, we want it to be the same. Yeah. And are, are developers getting excited about that? Do you have like UI designers that see it that way? I think so, yeah. We, uh, there's a number of people, both internal and external, that uh, quickly see the possibilities. Mm. You know, that the possibilities are pretty much endless, mm. you know. And uh, whether iRobot or not does it, when, when should I expect something like this? When, when am I going to get the beer out of the fridge? Let's admit, I want a beer out of the fridge. Uh, is that five years? Is that 10 years? Uh, I, that's close. You know, like you're you right? said, you know, whether, um, if you're talking about it in a product, it's farther out. If right. you're talking about in research, it's happening now. Yeah. Right? Uh, the question is, you know, is it something that you'll want to spend your hard-earned money on? Right. Uh, you know, is it at, available at the right price point? And that's a little farther away. But you think most of the technical problems at this point are solved? Uh, the, um, Visual object recognition, grasping all, you know, those problems are, mm. are still being solved. Uh, you know, many technologies feel like they're solved when right. they're done in research, but then when they're, they end up in practical uh, environments, right. which, re you know, randomly v uh, vary, right. uh, you find out that those problems aren't quite solved and it takes a, a number of iterations of being in the actual, in, out in the world right. to have them quote unquote solved. Which seems to be, an exciting, exciting thing about Ava is that you've got it out in unstructured environments already. Absolutely, her her navigation ability through cluttered environments is unparalleled. Yeah. You know, um, there are other robots that can navigate similarly, but a lot slower, a lot less dynamic. Um, you know, she's also, as I mentioned before, holonomic, meaning that you know she's capable of moving in any direction while facing any orientation. Like strafing. She and could that sort of thing. exactly like a first-person shooter, right? She could strafe. She can orbit. She can um, sidestep at two meters a second when she's going down the hallway if somebody mm. jumps in front of her. So she's very, very uh, sort of deft. Is that why we're going to see most of these things on wheels for the time being? Yeah, legs, if you're referring to legs, yes. uh, you know, legs are, um, obviously there's a ton of research happening. There's, there's toys and products right. uh, with, built with legs. But, you know, legs are, legged robots are still um, being held back by how much power they can put on board mm. and the complexity that uh, is there. And complexity equals, you know, lower reliability and greater cost is just not, um, it's just not cost effective and, and it's not necessary. Mm. Uh, I think you'll, when you see robots, you know, climbing stairs, which were developed for people to change elevation, right. then, you know, um, you may see legged robots. But so it's, it's something you guys are aware of, right? Oh, keeping, absolutely. Keeping your, keeping tabs on? Uh, you know, absolutely. Uh, leg locomotion. I, I think where you'll see, you know, practical implementations of legs are more like in, um, you know, prosthetic applications. Yeah. You know. Sweet. Well, <laughs> this is cool. I'm excited. I uh, hope to see it wandering around the show floor soon. I think you will, probably. But uh, And I hope to have it in my home, too, as well. Yeah, you'll have to talk to Laura. I'll, can, I will. Uh, I will. For you. Uh, definitely. And once you augment a robot arm, I think, I think you have something here. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Paul.